Okay, so on uh, the next thing I want to go over before we get to conditionals uh, is how we can combine uh, Boolean expressions, you know, with and and or, and come up with like multiple ways of or comparing different things. For example, you know, um, I have some variable x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 10. And let's say I want, you know, uh, variable is equal to, I want to, let's say I want to compare two different things, or I want to check if two different things are true. So what I could do is say, all right, um, is, is X greater than, uh, two. And I want to know if X is less than Y. So we kind of, it, it, it's two conditions in one. We're checking is X greater than two and we are checking if X is less than Y. So when we print out the result of variable, we get that that's true because it meets both criteria. X is certainly greater than two because it's six and six is less than 10. If I were to change it, so that I'm saying is x greater than y, it'd be false. And, you know, of course we can use or, which will get us true. Now, what if we throw a not in there? How does this work? So, we know that if, an, if it's an or statement, it's true. When I throw the not in there, it's false. Now, is that because the not is applying to this? Or is it applying to the entire thing? Because if not is simply being applied to this expression here, that means, you know, despite six being greater than two, it's not that, so that would be false. And this condition we know is false because six is not greater than 10. So that would produce a false output as well as the fact that if we made the entire thing under the not, that would be false as well. So we can check by making, you know, this, this one true. So now let's run it. Now we get true because the not is only being applied to this one. However, if we throw down some parentheses, then, then we can see it's applying the not is being applied to the entire uh, disjunction. So just keep that in mind. It's kind of like math, PEMDAS, right? You evaluate inside the parentheses first and then apply the not afterward. Um, what else? What else? Oh, we can also compare strings. All right. So string one. is equal to hello and string 2 is equal to hello with a capital H and you know I want to know is string 1 greater than string 2 it's true ooh why is this true well uh, because if you you have to go, you might know what ASCII is, the American uh, Standard uh, ASCII, American Standard Code for Information and in Interchange, something like that. And it it's basically sorts values by binary. And when it does that on the ASCII chart, uh, it is applying all the capital letters as lower numbers than the lowercase letters. Each of these letters has like a numerical representation. 
so um uh, I maybe I don't know just pull it up yourself because I I can't do it right now because OBS is uh just stuck on this one window well you can look it up yourself look up an ASCII chart A S C I I and you can see that lowercase h is associated with a higher numerical value than uppercase h. Well, what if they were the same? Then it would be false because they are literally the same. And we can check if they're the same by using a double equal sign. And of course, if I change it to uppercase, it's false. Again, because there is a um, you know, a different numerical value associated with the uppercase H. Okay. Well, what else, how else can we compare strings with each other? So, um, let's say, let's say, I, alright, I want the, I want the date, right? So I'm going to ask my user for an input. Enter today's date uh, whoops. Enter today's date in the format uh, day, month, and then year. Is that how it's written? Whatever. Um, and we'll do new line. Okay. Let's say, all right, I'm particularly interested in if it's April or not. So here's what I can do. I can say, all right, make a new variable for it. April check. Actually, let's just use, I'm starting like the underscore. All right. April check is going to be equal to, I'm going to ask, is, uh, Actually, if I'm going to make this work, I better stay the month. Okay. I don't know. We'll get the idea. Uh, we'll get the idea in a second. So, I want to say is April. Is April in the date? Now, um, unresolved reference date. I don't know what all that's about, but uh, let's see. Am I going to get an error? What is this? Um, unmatched parenthesis. Oh, oh, oh. I don't need this parenthesis here. I thought it was in a print statement. Okay. So, April check. Okay. So, let's run the program. Enter today's date. So, uh, you know, it's... It, We'll say it's my birthday, the 20th of April 9th, uh, I guess 2020. So it says true. Wow. Because April is indeed the month we used. Well, what if I'm interested more in March? Is March, well then I guess I, all right, let's keep it April. And then let's say, you know, I say, all right. It's the 13th of March, and it's 2020. What well, I produce is false. So here's what's going on. April check is checking if the string April is in the date. So the date is my input. So it checks my input, this part in green, for the string April, and it notices that it's not in there, so it produces a false. Now we can even, you know, go further with this, check one. Because, you know, what if I was lazy, and when it asked me for the date, I said, uh, the 13th of April, 2020. And I lowercased it. Well then, uh, oh, oh, oh. Got a little ahead of myself. All right, two. And then April check one. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but uh, let's get rid of this for now. All right, I got lazy and I said uh, lowercase April. 
then it still produces false. So maybe I want to account for that lowercase a. So we could come up with another check where we specifically put the a in there. And we could do April check one or April check two. That way, now when I type in my input, I'm going to do 13 of April 2020. It still gives me a true. And okay, one more, one more thing, one more thing. Okay. Um, now we'll get actually we'll get to it when we do conditionals. Don't even worry about. It. We'll get to it later. That's enough for this video. Uh, next video we start doing conditional statements, the big and fun part of programming that just makes life so so cool and allows us to do so much with our programs. So stay tuned for that.